All right, uh, more fun with Rudolf Steiner's uh, investigations into past lives. Um, this time, he takes a different tack, and instead of starting with a modern individual and going back to earlier incarnations, uh, what he does is start with the earlier incarnations and then find where they end up in, in the West. And his model here is all about uh, the, the attack, the two-pronged attack of Islam on the West. And as it turns out, um, you know, I have, I've spoken quite a bit about cultural immune systems, and the West has had an incredibly strong cultural immune system uh, against Islam. But there are other ways of getting into a culture than on the physical plane. You can get in through reincarnation, as it turns out, according to Steiner anyway. Um, so he starts out here in the age of Charlemagne. Here, here we have an image of Charlemagne, um, whose dates are 748 to 814. And um, contemporary with Harun al-Rashid. He really wants to draw your attention to uh, this guy here, Harun al-Rashid, who reigns in Baghdad. Uh, his dates are 763 to 809. Um, so what he does is he starts out by saying the court of Harun al-Rashid was at Baghdad, which had been recently built, uh, shifting Islam to the east. Islam moves from Mecca to Medina, then into uh, Damascus at Syria, then eventually by 800 uh, over to the east with the building of Baghdad. It starts shifting east, eventually towards Persia um, and the Shiite world. But he wants to draw your attention to the fact that this is an incredibly, the, the court of Harun al-Rashid is incredibly sophisticated. Lots of great mathematicians and astronomers. Um, he brought in all kinds of talent. This was a very sophisticated cosmopolitan civilization. By contrast with that of Charlemagne at Aachen, and uh, which was very primitive and barbaric. They could barely read and write. Uh, they had scholars like Einhard who wrote the first biography of Charlemagne. It's okay, I've read it. Um, Alcuin, uh, a few other scholars, nobody very interesting. Um, and Spengler does this comparison too, this interesting comparison where he says that um, the difference between, now think of the Arabs coming up across North Africa and crossing over into Spain that happens in 711, by the way, with Tariq. Uh, and then keep this individual in mind. Uh, then he becomes Jabal Tariq uh, or Gibraltar, uh, the rock of Gibraltar. Jabal Tariq means Mount of Tariq. Uh, Arabic name is Tariq ibn Ziyad, and he's an Umayyad. Um, and he is the first to lead the assault uh, across uh, uh, the water into Spain. Uh, we'll get to him. Uh, so Speng Spengler draws this interesting analogy between uh, the primitivity of the courts uh, around Char Charlemagne at Aachen uh, and the high sophistication, uh, the cosmopolitanism of the Arab civilization mo moving up into Spain. And there are all kinds of cultural influences that Charlemagne is drawing from the Arabs, such as the candy striping on their on the arches uh, at the palace at Aachen. Um, there are influences on Gregorian chants, Islamic music. Uh, we get the first concept of the troubadours coming in. All of this stuff comes in, and eventually uh, the Arabs, when they cross over into Spain, the Umayyad Arabs, uh, they bring the works of Aristotle, they bring alchemy, they bring algebra. al is the author, the author of the first text uh, on algebra. And um, so he wants to draw your attention to the, the prim primitivity. Oh, and the analogy, by the way, with Spengler, he says, think of the difference between the Mycenaeans and the Minoans. It's a similar thing where the Minoans were a highly sophisticated cosmopolitan civilization doing all this trade with Egypt, um, and the Mycenaeans were basically barbarians living in barbarian strongholds, uh, getting all their architectural 
and artistic influences from the South, from Minoan Crete. Very similar situation here with uh, Charlemagne bringing up influences from the South, uh, from the Umayyad uh, Arabs that are coming up in into Spain. Okay, so um, Steiner wants to draw your attention to the differences between uh, these two civilizations and the sophistication of the court at Harun al-Rashid, but also the idea of this two-pronged assault on the West. So we've got the Arabs coming in with Tariq crossing uh, in, into Spain in 711, and then we have a boundary act. This guy here, Charles Martel, in 732, prevents the Arabs from crossing the Pyrenees. That's, that's a boundary act that's similar to the Greeks resisting the Persians, let's say, at Marathon. Um, that's another boundary act. Civilizations have cultural immune systems, and they have boundary acts where they say, you will not cross this line. So they let the Arabs settle, have Spain, basically, for a while, which they, they have until Ferdinand and Isabella finally pushed them out for good. And then this other assault on the West's eastern flank, which is the Byzantine Empire at this time, um, I think starting with um, Moewia. Moewia is the first Umayyad uh, caliph. He reigns 661 to 680, and he is intent on smashing the Byzantine Empire. Um, so they're trying to get into the west uh, on the eastern flank as well. So there's this two-pronged assault, and eventually they are successful uh, against the Byzantine Empire, not the Arabs, but the Turks. Uh, the Seljuk Turks come in later who are barbarians, who come in from the hinterlands, uh, and they, they form the Ottoman Empire, uh, which is analogous to, I would say, the Romans versus the Greeks, the Ottomans versus the Arabs. The Arabs are highly sophisticated uh, philosophers and thinkers, um, but the, the Turks are not. They're just basically conquerors. And they finally take Constantinople in 1453, gobble it up like a piece of candy, and then proceed in the 17th century to, to uh, assault. The, Aust the Austro-Hungarian Empire has to come in as the uh, eastern flank, uh, as an, an immune system for the West. Uh, and they are at the gates, they're, they're in Vienna um, uh, in something like 1688. Um, but the Austro-Hungarians tough enough to resist them. So the West's immune system has been incredibly strong uh, in resisting the Islamic attempt, this two-pronged Islamic attempt to gobble up the West. So Steiner wants to draw your attention to, to this fact, this two-pronged assault. Because he says there are other ways of getting into a civilization than just on the physical plane. And so what happens is that the scientific court surrounding Harun al-Rashid, uh, which was very scientifically sophisticated, um, gets in when uh, he reincarnates as Francis Bacon. Uh, Francis Bacon, Lord, or Lord Verulam, as he's also been called. Um, and Bacon, of course, is the initiator of, of the official scientific method. He writes the New Atlantis. Uh, he introduces a kind of materialism, um, and as far as Steiner is concerned, this this is bringing in uh, the scientific mentality surrounding the court and, and its sophistication surrounding the court of Harun al-Rashid. It gets in through Francis Bacon as the, really the first sort of materialist thinker, and then so. Um, he draws your attention to this guy, Tariq, uh, Tariq Ibn Ziyad, um, who becomes named Jebel Tariq, or Gibraltar, basically, who is the first in 711 to lead the assault into Spain. And um, he says that Tariq then later reincarnates as none other than Charles Darwin, uh, who is also a materialist. Um, I'm not sure what the connection is between them, uh, but it's fascinating that if it's true um, that the Arabs are finding a way to get into the West on the astral plane 
instead of the physical plane. So this has been happening right under our noses for a long time here. Um, and then he says, um, at the court of Maimun, um, uh, who, whose dates are 786 to 833, at the court of Maimun, there was an astronomer, astrologer, a, a guy whose name we don't know, uh, a personality uh, that we don't have the name of in the records, but he was an incredibly learned astronomer and astrologer uh, in the court of Maimun um, at uh, Damascus, and who reincarnates then as Laplace, the great astronomer Laplace. So, surprise, surprise, the Arabs are getting in on the astral plane. They are infecting the West uh, they can't get in on the physical plane, so they find another way. When they cross through to the other side, the gate of death, they come in on the astral plane. Um, so they come in that way. And then, uh, let's see, we've got... Um, uh, let's see. This guy here, Mui Wea, and Mui Wea... Uh, was the first Umayyad caliph. Uh, his dates, he, he reigned 661 to 680, and he's the first Umayyad caliph in uh, uh, Damascus. And he basically just, he wasn't a great ruler, um, but he constantly assaulted the Byzantine Empire. Um, and he really is the originator of the conflict with the Byzantines. Uh, and the war between the, the Byzantine Empire and Islam just went on forever, all the way down to 1453. And he says that, uh, so Muawiyah tried this, to do this conquest, and he says that Muawiyah then finally reincarnates as none other than Woodrow Wilson, um, who presided, who was president during World War I, uh, and signifies the beginnings of the construction of America's universal state. Uh, those wars, uh, the World War One and II, um, Spengler compared to, or World War One, he died before World War Two got going. Spengler compared to the Punic Wars, um, which the the Romans won, and led to the creation of the Roman Empire, as analogous to the Americans uh, constructing a universal empire. Although he didn't see that that it would be the Americans. He thought it would be uh, the Europeans doing that. Um, and so uh, this is a fun chapter, I think, um, to think of these thoughts, even if these th insights are not true. They're just so much fun to think about. Um, the, the Arabs getting into the West on the astral plane instead of the physical plane. Um, there's always a way, isn't there? Um, so we'll leave it at that for that chapter.